I'm Mike. I'm Jason. Welcome to Snake Envy. We are going to do another genetics lingo of the day. We're going to do this one a little bit different. We're going to talk about a single subject because we think there's a lot to cover. Um, but let's talk about albino. So first off, there's two types of albino. T positive, T negative. And there is an enzyme, I believe it's pronounced thionase, which leads to, no, that's the amino acid, Tyanase. which leads to the development of an enzyme. We'll put, we'll put it on the screen. Sure. We might be mispronouncing yeah. it, but we'll put them on the screen. There's, there's an amino acid that leads to the creation of an enzyme, and the creation of that enzyme is what actually prevents the development of melanin. And so that's why you have the lighter colors and, the, and no black. Um, but let's talk about the difference between T negative, T positive. Basically what they're referring to, the positive, the negative means that that enzyme is missing. And what's the result of a T negative animal? Um, <clears throat> in my experience, and it's with colubrids, um, uh, T positives tend to have darker pigments, um, darker eye colors, some maybe even normal. Um, I don't know if that would be, you know, I'm not a biologist where like, yeah. I don't know, like, <laughs> uh, you know, the breakdown on that, but it's uh, if they really turn out to be albinos or not. Um, but T positives tend to have the darker purples instead of the lavenders that turn to white. There tend to be purples or dark lavenders. And so, and then the eye color, instead of being that pink color, they tend to be more of a, like if you look close, they'll have a ruby, a deep ruby eye color. And they can even appear and black unless yeah. you look really close. And, and every species, can act a little differently. It's right. not like this is a perfect textbook, you know. Yeah. Now I have read a little bit about what biologists have said about T positive, and, and it is a bit of a mystery in a way because they're not sure if a different enzyme is working on T positives. That is a mystery. They haven't identified what it is, if that's the case, and that's why the eyes remain darker, and that's why there appears to be some melanin. Um, or at least more of it than there is in a T negative. But there is a little mystery surrounding exactly why there's two different types. And there is a little bit of debate, like you say, whether T positives are truly albino, um, for whatever that's worth. Um, but there are two types. Now, pattern is sometimes affected as well. So a T positive might have a little more defined pattern than a T, a T negative. Yeah. The T minuses sometimes can be absent pattern in some species. And the T positives, not only will you see the eye color difference, but you might see a pattern that doesn't show up in the T negatives. So uh, definitely differences between the two. Um, as a breeder, tell us about albino in terms of what type of genetic trait it is. And in trying to get albino babies, what do you need to do? Um, is it lime bread? Is it recessive? How, how does it, albino work? In, in colubrids, it's almost always, I, and maybe always, recessive. I've never heard of a codom or a dominant or anything like that, or lime bread trait in albinos. It's always a recessive trait. Um, yeah, you get the red eyes, you have to line breed a little bit to continue with all color morphs really um you have to, in order to try and be sure yeah, what's what. yeah and yeah and you're gonna have to have you know to create more like if you breed an albino to an, a het which is a, a carrier of the albino gene so like if you want to create more albinos you most people want to breed albino to albino um which is 
fine. I, I tend to like to breed Hat to Albino, a, a carrier, um, a recessive trait carrier, heterozygous. Um, but what if you breed an albino to a normal? And so what happens is you get all normals, all normal offspring, but they will, every offspring will be carrying the albino gene. They'll all be head. Yes, they're all head. Interesting. So very, pretty simple genetic right there. But that gives you a lot of flexibility <clears throat> in any given season. If you're heavy on albinos, you know that you can visually, you know that you can produce more normal heads. Yeah, and I and, and as far as the hobby goes, I like one reason I like to do albino to het because some of your customers can't afford the higher end stuff, and so maybe they can only affair, afford hets that are half price or a visual and a carrier that combo that way, and so you can save you know money that way and still produce amazing snakes. Interesting. So that enables you to offer your customers a wider variety, particularly right. when it comes to pairs. I'll give you one albino and one het yep. and, and save them a little money that way. Perfect. So we're going to show you some examples of T positive, T negative, and going to try and show you a little bit of a variety in terms of the body color and pattern, but also uh, the difference between the eye colors of T negative and T positive. And please let us know in the comments when it comes to these genetic terms. We both agree they can often be very confusing, particularly for hobbyists and pet owners. So let us know which ones you'd like us to talk about. Thanks. Thank you. This is an albino San Diego gopher snake. You got the bright oranges and yellows. The lavender's still here because it's a juvenile. It's a year old. But see the pink eyes? Generally red or pink on albinos. Um, so this is a snow San Diego. It's carrying albino show it's visually showing albino and it's visually showing an aneurysmic look at these eyes look how ruby they are because it's a t positive albino they would be bright pink if it was a t negative albino but it's a t positive so you get the deep ruby and you get some iris color too sometimes yeah i was going to say it'll be interesting to see what the camera picks up but from a distance with me standing over here, I can't really see the ruby. It comes across as come around to the back side, almost normal on the dark side. It's even more so. Yep. So it'll be interesting how much of that the camera picks up. But you're right; there is a little and it's, iris color, and it's real. And some of them are really hard. You got to look really deep and in certain lights to see it. This is a rusty Sonoran gopher. Um, look at those. This is a little different than most. But those are definitely albino colors. T positive colors. The to eye is totally normal. It is not ruby. It is not pink. It is total normal coloration. I mean, if you looked really deep, you might see some. Here's a T negative house snake. It's hard to see the pink because the pink eyes blend in with the uh, skin color a little bit, but they kind of have those python looking eyes where they kind of bulge out. And you can definitely see it even from above. And this is what I mean. Every species is a little different. This is a Cal King. Um, I'm not very su super you know, uh, up on the genetics on Cal Kings. Um, but this, to me, is like a form of T-positive. Look how ruby these eyes are. It's a deep ruby color. Definitely red, but definitely dark. Keep going. Just keep the camera there. And then look at that. 
calcine, T negative, red eyes, pink eyes. Pink, very bright. This one is very dark. This one has very bright eyes. You can definitely, there you go, you can definitely see the difference. 